Hi everyone, I'm Joel from Tribal Arts Films and this is the first part of the two-part series on how I created the Blow Up Him House Kakarook video which is found in the link below using After Effects. In this tutorial we'll be looking at how I created the sparkle and smoke effect using a light node and also trap code particular. So sit back and enjoy. Before you begin this tutorial you're gonna need a plugin called trap code particular installed in After Effects. Also, I'm assuming that you have a basic knowledge and understanding on how to use After Effects as I'm going to be moving pretty quickly through the composition and the breakdown of its elements. So let's begin. If we look at the raw footage, you can see what it looks like. You have my partner here, Evelyn, who is sweeping at the corner and then I come in with the stick, which is just a normal stick, and blow up the house kakarook. So let's have a look. I'm walking through and I put the stick in the house kakarook. Now there's a point where Evelyn sees me and tries to chase me away and you can see there's a point where she jumps which is when I wanted to have the explosion. So it is important that before you film your footage or your visual effects shots you pre-visualize what your effects are going to be to make it as easy as possible in post-production but also to try and sell the effects because if Evelyn is walking past here and she doesn't jump it's not gonna be as convincing that there was an explosion in post-production as if nothing happened rather you want the actor to pretend that it's exploded and to be affected by the force of that explosion so keep that in mind when you're doing your visual effects shots now also you have to keep in mind that some of the best visual effects are effects that uses real references in the shot and then you manipulate them. So you can see that in order for me to create the smoke effect it's going to be really easy for me to create the smoke effect because there's actually smoke in the background. If you look over here there's some smoke in the background which is great because I can use that as a reference for creating the smoke. Now I wish I would have had that same reference for the sparkle effect that I have but it's not in there so we're kind of like just got to guess it into our footage to blend it in. The first step obviously is to track this stick, to track the end of the stick to add in both the sparkle and the smoke. You can see that there's a reason why I've chosen a light colored stick so it will be easier for me in post production to track and to add in our elements. So to create the tracking effect or to create the sparkle effect, first I'm going to track the stick with a light uh, layer. Now the light layer is going to be named emitter. This is important because when we're going to use trap code particular, trap code particular can emit particles based upon a light. And the light that it uses will be any light with the name emitter on it. So that's why we're going to name this light layer emitter. If I enable what I've done here is create a light layer and track frame by frame where I think the end of the stick is. You can see here I've tracked it all. Tracking, tracking, tracking. It's a bit of movement here going down there. And then finally I'm gonna throw that stick in the house cockroach. Once you've created that tracking data using the light layer, we can now use the trap code particular effect to point and to emit based upon where our light layer is. So I've got a normal solid layer. I've named it Sparkle. Let me just see what's in there. Trap code particular. Now you can see under emitter, am I emitting point? No, I'm going to emit using lights. And any light with the name emitter is going to track the emitter to that. So you can see I've named it lights and once I've connected it to my emitter you can see that the sparkle now connects based upon my tracking data of the light. Awesome. The next step I added a trap code uh, shine to it and I'm using a preset colorize. Under colorize I'm using the Mars presets. I could use to color 
the actual sparkle. As I said, because I didn't have a real sparkle reference, I'm sort of guessing at how the sparkle color is going to look. Now when I create the smoke element, I'm pretty much doing exactly what I've done to the sparkle element. I'm going to create a trap code particular effect. I'm going to track it to my light. I'm going to change the particle to a cloudlet. Now as I've already mentioned, because I have real smoke in the background, it's easy for me to reference that to color my smoke element. So you can see I'm going to match the smoke color and opacity to real smoke in the footage. Now, because I've tracked the smoke to my uh, light layer, I'm not going to add any velocity to the emission. Pretty much it is going to just follow and trail my light layer. And you can see if I adjust the life of the smoke particle, make it last longer, I can make longer smoke trails. But if I bring the life down, the size of my light, the smoke trail is a lot shorter. Okay, once I'm happy with the sparkle and the smoke and they've been tracked, let's have a look at what it is. I'll press Control Shift H to hide all these um, reference elements like that. And you can see what we've got so far. That's great, but there are some things that you can see is not looking good. You can see when I track the sparkle and the smoke, the smoke and the sparkle are not hiding behind this purple tree. So there are a few foreground elements that we have to mask out in order for it to be layered properly and to look realistic. Even here, as I put in the dynamite, it's not hidden behind the wall of the Kakarook House. So we do this by creating an alpha mask. Basically, I've gone in, and this is why it was important for me to not do a handheld. I just keep it on a tripod so it's easy for me to mask out these elements. I'm going to mask out the pawpaw tree and mask the wall of the house Kakarook. Now with that mask, I'm then going to duplicate the mask so that they're on both the sparkle and the smoke elements. They're going to be above the smoke and sparkle elements, like so. And then I'm going to hide those masks and on the sparkle element making sure that the alpha channel alpha mask is above it I'm gonna go and do a track mat and what that does is you can see here now my sparkle is hidden behind the mask that I created which was this white solid and then we also will do that to the smoke element create the mask and then alpha it and you can see now when I walk through the sparkle and the smoke it's going behind the purple tree and also because I've done the mask for the wall when I put it inside it looks like it's inside the wall and you can see the type of mask I've done I've left the elements that's not a wall I've mask that out and I'm also masking a bit of Evelyn here so that she will also be in the foreground in front of the fire as she jumps through like that okay so that's good let's have a look at what we got well, let's enable the sparkle element. So, we've got the sparkle element going behind the purple tree and going into the house. Now, with that smoke element, I've added also some keyframes. 
basically once I've put the dynamite inside the wall I'm going to change the velocity of the smoke so that it increases and it's filling up the house kakarot like that that is the end of the first part of this tutorial series keep up to date by subscribing to our youtube channel on the latest tutorials from after effects davinci and any other creative software that we are using thank you and goodbye